Uh, hi, I'm Hugh Perkin. So uh, this follows on for the previous uh, video that was that presented upgrades to my sector set for making the network model a bit more PyTorch idiomatic. Uh, so like in the last video, I presented the encoder and decoder module. Uh, what I want to do this video is talk about the batching. So uh, I'll put like links to my code in the video, YouTube video. You might want to pause and just open those up. Uh, so I've got kind of two versions of the same file. Uh, so the old version uh, is this, which is the old, this is the old version, right? Yeah, uh, the old version is not using any sort of batching for the encoder, and I, I wanted to make the encoder a bit more PyTorch idiomatic by making it use batching, and always that should run faster, right? Uh, so I just want to use this video to go over uh, the batching. So batching is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's fairly standard. I mean, works the same way as um, like in the original Torch or, or what, TensorFlow or whatever. Uh, but I just kind of want to go over it. Um, so in the original one, basically I'm going over uh, I'm going over each character by character in the encoder. Um, and in the new one, uh, basically, I take so input encoded is a vector of numbers. Each number represents here it represents one letter. If it was word level, it'd be like one word, right? Uh, in well, actually no, this is actually well, no, yeah, it is. That's right. Uh, this is simply just like turning that back into a sentence so it can check that uh, the uh, in input sentence is right. So you can ignore that line. And then here we're so we've got the encoder, embedding matrix, prediction, decode, criterion, loss. Yeah, all right. So uh, this encoder is an instance of the encoder uh, module created earlier. So we take the encoder module, which is big E encoder, and using that uh, here, right, we're creating this little e encoder object. Uh, passing its parameters into the optimizer. So then we can simply call this um, with our batch. So our batch is, well, I'm still, I'm, well, when I say I'm batching, I'm not actually batching. I'm still just passing in one example of time, to be honest. Uh, I'm batching up the time steps. Well, I'm not even batching up the time steps. Feeding in the time steps in one go. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what happens under the scene. I don't know if they all get transported to the GPU and processed uh, in a kind of fusion, kernel fusioned way or, or not, to be honest. It's something I want to check. But at least it makes the code a bit tighter. Uh, so I take the input encoded, which is a vector of numbers. Uh, I'm then, so this, I'm using, I'm, I'm taking this in as NumPy. I'm then converting this into um, Torch Tensor. Uh, I'm unflattening it slightly. So basically, uh, this represents the batch size, which is one, and this represents the sequence length. Okay. Now, since this is the encoder, so a question in my mind was, should I be feeding in the entirety of the input, or should I, like, chop off the first or last? I thought, okay, this is the, the encoder, so we probably want to feed in the last one, uh, but I'm calculating the loss, right? Uh, for calculating the loss, obviously, we well, we can't use the last one because we don't know what it should be. We don't have a label for it, uh, I think. Uh, so I'm truncating the last one. I think that's correct. Um, all right. So, so it basically works as before, uh, except I'm just feeding in everything in one go. Uh, I'm, I'm reshaping it, uh, so we've got the sec length first, followed by the batch size. Um, the, we unembed it as before by multiplying by the, the embedding matrix. I'm completely flattening it here, um, which is fine because I'm not actually batching it. Uh, I'm just doing the time steps. Um, and then we do the prediction as before, taking the arg max of the output values. Uh, so v now is a vector rather than a single value. Um, and then we can just feed that to our um, decode passage method, which is going to give us the, the, um, 
the sentence. Uh, so this is the sentence that the encoder um, predicted, but it's like predicting one letter at a time, given that all the previous letters were... Well, we're doing teacher forcing here, right? I mean, we always do that with the uh, encoder. Uh, and the only modification I've made compared with the standard encoder is I've got this... I'm, I'm calculating the loss for the encoder. Um, yes, right. So... Yeah, so basically, it, this is pretty similar to before, to be honest. Mm. But it is a lot shorter now that I'm batching across the time steps. Uh, I would like to batch across the... Well, not batch across the time steps, but... Yeah. Feeding in the time steps together. I'd like to feed in all the time steps for the decoder in one go, but like, I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. Uh, I'm not sure if there is or not. Uh, but we can certainly feed them all in one go for the encoder. And we can calculate the loss all in one go. Um... So we just chop off the last of the uh, input that we're feeding in. Um, no, we chop off the first one, right? And so we're using all the others as the targets. Yeah, that's right. That's the thing. Right, we get rid of the first one. Um, and then we're comparing the predictions uh, with uh, the input uh, just with the first one chopped off. We usually, like, so for example, the second input is the prediction for the first it's the prediction for the first uh, time step okay and I guess we can run it um, so let's just run it yeah so it runs as before and it learns uh, correctly. So good. Uh, all right. Thank you very much.